Good evening, my friends. I want to talk tonight about something that I've been asked about quite a bit recently, which is, well, the title of this, relating to other people with trust and calm. And just about relationships in general and how to navigate those calmly and confidently and effectively, which is important and takes a considerable, considerable amount of effort. So this time I'm just going to be talking about the kind of how how it works and I'm going to make another video after this that's more how to but understanding this is one situation in particular where understanding what's going on is absolutely paramount to living in the solution and getting and, and getting to the place where you want to be with it so the first thing I'm going to say is for those who are in recovery of some kind whether it's recovery from a limbic system injury or whether you have maybe just have just <laughs> seems kind of silly, but have like anxiety or depression, chronic anxiety or depression or PTSD, something more psychologically based only. Um, or if you're recovering from an addiction of any kind, this is applicable for those people. The next part will be applicable to everyone. So if those, if that doesn't apply to you, you can skip to the second part of this video and I'll put the time in the um, description. So if you do have, have gone through something like that where you have had a brain impairment or have gone through some sort of psychological issue or an addiction understand that one of the things that happens in that scenario is is this our brains are responsible for filtering out all of the sensory information that we in that are, it's coming in every second and there's so much there's so much information coming in all the time and when our brains have had this obsessive pattern related to any of those things. A large part of the brain function is taken up by this obsessive pattern. And part of that is, so that that's part of it. It's just your, your brain's been hijacked. And the thing that's hijacked it is your survival center. And it thinks, you know, it thinks that keeping you stuck in that place is keeping you alive, whatever it is, what, whatever, regardless of what it is, it thinks it's keeping you alive. And so it's very highly invested in repeating those patterns that are so familiar. And part of what happens too in that state is that you, most people who are deeply in that state, we, if you are, you likely perceive yourself as a victim to life. That's, that's what happens. That was how I lived my whole life prior to recovery was as a victim to my life. And when you're in this victim state, it's, it's takes a lot of effort not to take everything that everyone says and everything they do and the way that they say it and their tone of voice personally. And part of that is, again, it's the brain is very, it's on high alert to everything. It's looking for danger. It's also like, it's looking for, you know, oh, is there, is there any sign of danger here? But it's also looking for anything that will help it repeat those negative patterns that it's addicted to. Because ultimately, in the case for all of that, there's some sort of thing that sets it off and you end up in this addictive pattern, whether you're addicted to just the chemistry of, you know, of stress chemistry or whether you're addicted to a substance. And it's an addictive pattern one way or the other. So your brain wants to be reproducing those emotions and experiences that will give you, give it a hit. So it'll be looking for negativity in what people are saying. It will be looking for reasons to feel self-conscious for, um, you know, to, to feel threatened by other people. Um, and even just to feel overstimulated by being around a lot of people because it's just a lot more sensory information that the brain is like not sure what to do with and considers possibly threatening. So that's why that happens. And one of the solutions to this is really just doing your work, whatever, whether you're doing self-directed neuroplasticity, whether you're going to therapy, whether you're doing a 12 step program or something else, whatever it is that you're working on doing to heal, just doing that, just working on repatterning your brain and calming your brain is going to go a very long way to ending all of the discomfort that comes with this, like kind of being around other people and talking to them as, and hanging out or whatever, having human interaction. That tends to just, a lot of it disappears by itself as you go through the process. So that said, moving on to what's applicable to, to everyone. Um, so there's one belief that makes relating to other people with trust and calm possible. And it's this that every person has inherent dignity, every human being, and is worthy of love and respect inherently. That it has to do with what we are and who we are, not anything else. That's the foundation. And how this starts is when we start to really treat ourselves that way, when we start to treat ourselves as though we are worthy of 
all of the goodness life has to offer as if we're worthy of love and respect. And this is a moment to moment thing. It's, it's the reason behind everything you do being because I'm worthy of love. I get up in the morning and I do my practice, whatever that may be, because I'm worthy of the wholeness and the healing and the increased well-being and capacity that I know my practice will bring me. I'm worthy of that and I love myself, so I'm going to do my practice. I'm going to do my work, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how much it feels like pulling teeth, no matter how much effort it takes or willpower. I'm doing this because I'm worthy of love and I'm worthy of all the effort it takes to love myself. And then in every moment of your day, making the choices you make to go to work or to, you know, to, to not to eat this or go this place or stay here or do this every single choice you make because you're listening to yourself and saying, okay, what is it that I need? I'm worthy of having my needs met. I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of, of respecting myself, my true needs and my authentic nature and making those choices from that place. And that takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of awareness. And when you firmly believe that you're worthy of love and you start to treat, you know, you, you treat everything that arises within yourself with love. And as a, as, as basically every, thing that comes up within you is a sign that you need love, that you're in need of something and you give that whatever it is you need in that moment to yourself, whether it's boundaries or something positive to focus on, you nourish yourself with beauty, with things that make you feel calm, you surround yourself with, you, with things that make you feel joy. And a couple things happen when you begin to do this consistently. You begin to see that you're not a monster, which you may have thought you were before you started this process. A lot of us do when we're in that state and when our brain has been hijacked by this obsessive pattern and survival mechanism, we feel like we are a monster. And so you realize, okay, I'm not a monster. I'm just a person who needs love. You realize that you're not in control. You're not in control of your circumstances and you're also not in control of even what comes up within you on a day-to-day -day basis. You're in control of how you respond to it. And that's it. So you begin to understand that how, you know, you're not responsible for other people's actions toward you. That has nothing to do with you. The only thing you're in control of is how you respond to that in light of, I am worthy of love. And so are they. And you start to make those choices. The last thing you realize is that this is a lot of work. Really changing yourself is a lot of work. It's an it takes an enormous amount of awareness and effort in every single moment. And when we do that, I mean, and then part of it too, is you just begin to understand what it is to be human. You start to practice, you know, you stop criticizing yourself. You stop judging yourself. You stop sabotaging yourself. You start to treat, you know, you learn how to, when you make a mistake, to forgive yourself. You learn how, when you feel triggered, to soothe yourself. And you begin to understand all of the patterns that used to lead to you lashing out at other people or behaving in erratic ways or doing things that aren't in line with your true self, that like negative behavioral patterns and so on. You're like, oh, that wasn't really me to begin with. That was just a sign that I was in need of love. And you realize that because as you work on that yourself, like it becomes very obvious that it's working. It works and you see the fruit of it and you realize, oh, wow, I was really just a person who needed love, my own love by, you know, and, and a lot of times it's very tough love. It's very, it takes an enormous amount of strength. But when you do that, when you see other people doing the same things you used to do, it's like, oh, I, I know what that's like. And I know that that's just a sign that they need love too. And they need their own love and they need to make that choice for themselves. That has nothing to do with me. That's coming from their interior environment. That's why they're doing this. That's why they're saying this. It has to do with them, not me. But you can only understand that when you've done that for yourself and noticed how your responses to other people are because of where you're at in that moment, not because of them and, and so on. So you, when you learn all that for yourself, you begin to automatically see other people in a different light and be like, oh yeah, I can relate to that. And I also understand that, you know, if a person's acting in a really crabby way, that's not their true nature. They need love. <laughs> and, um, Yeah, that's uh, the other thing that happens is so <laughs> this just as important is when we start when we're really loving ourselves and we're really taking full responsibility for ourselves, for our own well-being, realizing I'm the only person who can make me happy. I'm the only person who can create my own well-being. I'm responsible for my happiness and I'm responsible for my life and the outcomes in my life. I'm responsible for my choices. I'm responsible for my life, for myself. When you do that and you really take that responsibility and you fill yourself up proactively with your own power, you stop looking at other people as with, in this light of dependency. Because a lot of times beforehand, when we're in, acting in a victim mindset, when the brain is in that state, it tends to view other people as 
well, you're supposed to make me feel better. You're there to make me feel better. You're there to help me out of this mess that I'm in. And when you've helped yourself out of your own mess, you don't look at them like that anymore. You begin to see them as you are, as just a person who needs love. And you begin to think, once you've filled up your own cup and you are thriving and you are living your life and you are living from love, you begin to think and look at people as beautiful beautiful humans who are worthy of love and, and begin to add, look at relationships as, how can I offer something? Like, I've gotten so good at loving, how can I offer this to somebody else? How can I how can I contribute something to my friendships, to my relationships, to my kids, to my work relationships, to my family relationships? What can I offer them? How can I love this person? I've learned how to listen to myself. I've learned how to love myself. Now I know how to love. So how can I contribute to others' joy? Because that brings a lot of joy to us when we can contribute to other people's joy, other people's joy. So that and that perspective shift is everything. Because then when you relate to people, not only is your brain not looking you're not looking to them for validation you're not afraid of them anymore and and this is another huge thing is that you in that process over time of learning to love yourself you begin you, your brain your inner self begins to trust you that you can take care of anything that comes your take care of anything you can handle whatever comes your way and that you you're not going to take it personally because you've chosen to love and respect yourself so you're not going to take other people's criticism personally you're not going to take what they say personally because you know your you know you know yourself you know who you really are and when you do that then you can stop being afraid of other people you can make extended eye contact you can not know what they're going to say have no idea what they think of you and still have an open and engaging conversation because you're truly confident in your self-worth and you know that they're worthy of love and whatever they say is a reflection of them not you so you can just walk into a conversation and be open to whatever happens open to intimacy open to um having a constructive argument, open to learning something new, realizing, hey, maybe I didn't know something, maybe I was wrong. It's okay to be wrong. I'm, long, I'm wrong a lot. I learned from it. Okay, cool. And that creates a whole different dynamic by itself. So that's the beginning. That's really just kind of the, the how it works bit. And in another video, I'll go deeper into some other things that really taking responsibility for your actions and realizing and that's part of it because when we trust ourselves and we know our own intentions we know we have nothing to fear we're not hiding anything we're being completely transparent we're being completely authentic and if and yeah that there's a whole other video about that because that can add a lot of sense of peace to in your relationship to others that understanding that you don't have to prove anything you don't have anything to hide you are kind of see-through in a sense like i'm transparent i'm authentic i'm me and i accept myself as i am that's another big thing. As you do this work, you begin to realize that we're not even in control of who we are. We're not, we are a gift to ourselves, human beings. So as we do this work and we get to know ourselves and find what brings us alive, what brings us joy, what do we like? What do we like? What are we like? You know, what kind of a personality do we have? Am I extroverted or introverted? And, and it's really just a process of discovery. There's a lot of that that's inherent. And as you really just listen for your own truth and what brings you joy, you'll find those things. And it's cool, though, because when you realize that you can't change the essence of who you are, you realize you can't change the essence of, of who someone else is. So you just accept them as they are and work with that. Work with that reality of who you are and who the other person is. And there's such a freedom in realizing that we don't have to fix our... We don't have to fix anything. We don't have to fix ourselves. We don't have to fix other people. We're here for love and connection and play and, and building something beautiful in this world. That's that's what relationships are about and, you know, supporting each other in whatever way we can. So that understanding, when it really gets lived out in a way that becomes embodied, leads to really calm, open communication, you know, and whether with people who have been difficult and people who you get along with well, it allows you to navigate difficult relationships successfully and peacefully and achieve like a peaceful agreement on what that relationship's gonna look like. And then with people who you get along with well, it just enables an incredible amount of, you know, going deeper into those relationships, working through issues um, and, and just achieving deeper and deeper levels of intimacy and connection with them. So that's that for today. And then, yeah, next time will be much more of a how-to. So I hope this answers some questions and provides some relief to people because I think um, if you don't know why you're experiencing so much social anxiety and discomfort around people it can be a little unnerving so that's my hope much love to all of you beautiful humans and i will see you soon